I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Welcome to Stronger Tonight. My name is Ruth and we have an awesome night in store for you. I am so excited. The show tonight draws on our 2020 theme, Greater Heights, particularly drawing inspiration from Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth. We have an awe-inspiring lineup tonight, uh, featuring uh, Bishop Shane McKinley, Jen Bryant, Father Rob Galea, Joe Malandres, plus a whole bunch of other people. Really, really excited. Can't even explain how excited I am. So we all know that the world isn't like it's ever been before. I mean, I've been going to meetings in my PJ uh, bottoms, so, you know, they'll never know. <laughs> Things are a little strange at the moment. But we didn't want to, uh, to stop, stop any kind of gathering if we could help it. So, while tonight cannot be like a normal Stronger Rally, um, it's just not possible to be with you all. Um, no matter how much we wish we could be. But instead we're here with some music, with some talks, with a few interviews. And best of all, we have the ability to have a virtual gathering in the comments and chat section. So, I will be there, so say hi, um, have a bit of a chat, get some discussion happening. And if you haven't guessed, um, we did record this over the course of the last week. I didn't want my internet to fail me again. It's failed a few times during live streams and things and I just didn't want to have an event like this with so much work and preparation to then fail at the last minute because there is an internet overload at the moment. So, Stronger Tonight, uh, not live but definitely happening tonight. Um, that's enough from me for now, I will be back later. And now I'm going to hand you over to the absolutely incredible Jen Bryant to get us started with Stronger Tonight. Hi guys, my name is Jen Bryant and uh, it's just a joy to be here with you guys tonight. I know it's in a bit of a different kind of way um, and I know I was supposed to be there in person with you all and I was really looking forward to it. But of course things have gone a little bit crazy so welcome to my little studio my little home studio um, it's really cool to be able to invite you into this space and to still be able to be together um, and before we start I wanted to um, have a make a little shout out to my good friend someone who you may recognize and know his name is Jay Sano or Josh Angrizano He's going to be helping out tonight with a couple of songs um, just to really inspire you guys and um, just, to, just to really bring some joy from afar. Um, know that we're thinking and praying of each, each of you uh, tonight and I really hope that tonight um, is a really 
powerful time, a prayerful time. And uh, I'll be sharing some music with you guys tonight, some original stuff. And the first song, some of you might know, so I hope you can uh, sing up loud. I expect to hear you from where I am down in Melbourne. So this first one is a song called Raise Up Your Voice. And I wrote it thinking about um, empowering people to use their voices for good in the world and our hearts coming alive. So that's my prayer for you tonight, that our hearts may come alive in this hard time that we find ourselves in. So please sing with us tonight. Let's raise up our voices. Let's raise it up, raise it up. Yeah, yeah. Let's raise it up, raise it up. Come on, let's raise it up, raise it up. Come on, raise up your voice. Raise it up, raise Our it up. Our hearts have come alive, come alive. Come on, raise up your voice. Raise it up, raise Our it up. Our hearts have come alive, come alive. Come on, raise, raise up. up your voice. Raise it up, raise Our it up. Our hearts have come alive. Come alive, come on, raise up your voice. Raise it up, raise it up. Come come alive, come alive. You know our every breath. You know our heart's desire. It's your love alive in us. It's your love that lifts us up. Come on, raise up your voice. Raise it up, raise it up. Our hearts have come alive. Come alive, come on, raise up your voice. Raise it up, raise it up. Our hearts have come alive, have come alive. And when darkness falls on us and fear is taken over, we need your love alive in us. We need your love to lift us up. Come on, raise up your voice. Raise it up, raise it up. Our hearts have come alive. Come alive, come on, raise up your voice. Raise it up, raise it up. Our hearts have come alive, have come alive. When the chips are down and the times are tough. We'll raise it up, raise it up. When the sun shines out and you feel that love. Let's raise it up, raise it up. Rain or shine, the Lord has to die. We'll raise it up, raise it up. Lord, I promise that all my life. We'll raise it up, we come alive, 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 alive. alive. Oh, we, we come, come alive. alive. We, we come alive, 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 alive. alive. Oh, we, we come alive. We come alive, alive, alive. Oh, we come alive. Yeah, we come alive, alive, alive. Oh, we come alive. Come on, raise up your Raise it up, raise Our it hearts up. Come alive, come alive, come on, raise up your voice. Raise it up, raise Our it up. Our hearts have come alive, come alive, come on, raise up your voice. Raise it up, raise it up. Our hearts have come alive, hey, they come, come alive, come on, raise up your voice. Raise it up, raise it up. Our hearts have come alive, come alive. Let's raise it up, raise it up, yeah, yeah. We'll raise it up, raise it up, give it all to Him. We'll raise it up, raise it up, give it all to Him. Let's raise it up, raise it up. Day. With each new horizon, you show us the way. You show us the way. We find understanding, we walk in your truth. We transform our hearts and lead us to you. Lead us to you. When the night falls, the spirit. 
Spirit guide us through the darkness, lead the way. Be our power deep within us. Come revive our hearts again. Light shines bright down in the spirit. Most people never acknowledge it because they fear it. Some sacrifice their light to stay near it. A beautiful sight, beautiful struggle. The world is loud, spirit is subtle. Beautiful sight, beautiful struggle. The world is loud, spirit is subtle. Uh, Holy Spirit's my confidant. God's my pat when the nights are long. When everything around me's feeling wrong, you give me strength to sing along. Praise your name until I'm gone. By your sides where I belong. You're our joy and trials and pain. This revival is bringing real When change. night falls, spirit guide us through the darkness, lead the way. Be our power deep within us. Come revive our hearts again. When the night falls, spirit guide us through the darkness, lead the way. Be our power deep within us. Come revive our hearts again. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Come revive our hearts again. Ooh, 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 ooh. Come revive our hearts again. Ooh, 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 ooh. Come revive our hearts again. Ooh, 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 ooh. Come revive our hearts again. Yeah. Amen. What a way to get started. I absolutely love the joy that both Jen and Josh bring to everything that they do. Every time I hear both of those songs, I actually can't stop myself from dancing. <laughs> Just a little bit of a... <laughs> but before I embarrass myself any further, um, with any more dance moves, I've got lots, but I'm not pulling them out tonight. We have a really special message from the one and the only Deacon Addy Indra. And he's got an absolutely spectacular view behind him. Hey guys, uh, this is Deacon Addy Indra here. Uh, I'm still in Rome, uh, in, in the seminary. Um, we cannot travel back to Australia, hence there are some um, Australians living here in the college. I want to wish you a blessed Easter time. We're still in the season of Easter, obviously. And uh, I know this, the situations that we have at the moment um, are not easy. We're doing well um, over here, still on lockdown. But uh, yeah, we're assured. I think I'm sure we, we all know that uh, the peace of uh, the risen Christ would help us to um, be spiritually united even though we cannot be uh, in each other's presence physically. Uh, be assured of my prayers for you and please also keep praying for us and um, I hope to see you guys in Australia soon. God bless. Thanks Addy for your message. Uh, you are definitely in my prayers and I feel it's safe to bet you in other people's prayers as well. 
and hopefully later in the year we'll be able to celebrate together at your ordination. Um, now I was delighted earlier this week, absolutely delighted, to be able to sit down um, over a Zoom with Bishop Shane McKinley. Now Bishop Shane has been in Santos now for six months and it's been a really busy time for him. I don't think he has stopped since, since he started. Um, and now, maybe with, um, with a little bit of isolation going on, maybe he might actually have a chance to catch his breath. So just a little bit of a side note, I had some AV issues on this one and a later interview, a few little hiccups. Um, it's all good, we'll go with it. So let's all go have a chat with Bishop Shane. Welcome everyone um, to a chat with Bishop Shane McKinley. A welcome to Stronger Tonight, Bishop Shane. Thank you, Ruth. I'm really pleased to be able to be here online at least, uh, which is as good as we're able to do anything at the moment. But it's something that we're making the most of in all sorts of ways. Yeah, it's, it's a strange way to start your time here in Sandhurst, isn't it? You've only been here since October? since October so I've just passed six months wow. um, still a baby bishop I think yeah. but uh, I'm it's very fortunate that I at least had uh, what probably four months before this began so that I'd been around the diocese a bit and wasn't it it's not a complete stranger to me and I've met yeah. all of the priests at this stage stayed in a lot of the parishes uh, celebrated mass in the churches, visited some of the schools at least, uh, so that when we did stop moving around and stop having public celebrations, at least the connections that I've had, I'm able to picture um, picture the people that I'm talking to and and mostly the, the places that we're, that we're talking about. Um, and in some ways too, while I'm really missing the time, on the, well, not the time on the road. I don't like travelling <laughs> and the time that that takes. But I am missing the opportunity to be around with people and uh, and visit the parishes and visit the priests. And so it's a... Um, uh, but the people are tuning in in enormous numbers on Sunday mornings and also to uh, things like this. And so while I'm not seeing people and continuing to have a chance to become familiar with them, um, an awful lot of people are telling me that they're seeing me more than they normally would <laughs> and uh, more regularly than they normally would on a sun you know, each Sunday morning. And there's something very good about that. So, uh, so I think it's an opportunity, well, it's not one we would have chosen. It is, it is yeah. an opportunity for people to become a bit more familiar with me um, so that when and I do get the chance to be out on the road and meet people personally, uh, I won't, it won't be uh, quite such an un, unfamiliar and new thing for, for them, even if it is still for me. Look, it was clearly a wonderful experience for everyone who was there. Uh, I was enormously impressed by the uh, the effort that people from all sorts of dioceses, including our own, had made to be there and to uh, make it possible for people from uh, for young people from our various parishes to be there. Uh, and then it was it was run very very well. Like it was a very slick operation, uh, and very very worthwhile. Yeah, you know, there was so much uh, so much going on. Uh, I think one of the critical things in terms of it being a a, a lasting um, enhancement for the life of faith of the people who are part of it is how you connect something like that, which is uh, so clearly something that can only happen very occasionally yeah. on such a scale and with, with that amount of resources, and is so different from the normal events and experiences that we're part of. How do you make a connection between that 
and the uh, the life that people have when they get back. And I think an enormous part of what makes the difference for that is both the the lead in and the lead out, uh, the the preparation and the follow up. Mm -hmm. And I was very impressed to see in our own context the work that had been done long before I arrived of preparing people uh, and then the follow-up you know, the day that we spent together afterwards uh, seemed to me a really worthwhile uh, day both both as beginning the the transition back to being in the diocese rather than being in the middle of the uh, that enormous yeah event uh, but also one of the things that happens in a great big event like that where you're carried along by the momentum and the excitement of all that's happening and all the people uh, and is that there's there's often not a lot of space mm -hmm. so the the focus of that time that we had in the day afterwards of of reflection and looking back and uh, and teasing out things that that were good to hang on to and to uh important to move forward with i thought that was really valuable uh, and i know people have been in contact with uh with various people in their own areas since we've been back and i've certainly uh enjoyed it in some of the uh, the parishes and schools that i've visited uh, having some connections with uh, with people who i met there at uh, ACYS. So I think there's uh, an enormous role for youth. It annoys me when people talk about young people as the future of the church. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, you get to be you get to be part of the present of the church when you're baptised. Oh, that's uh, lovely to hear. <laughs> yeah, not uh, everyone's opinion about things, but it's, it's good to know. No. And um, so. So each, each person plays their part uh, and has their own contribution to make. You know, everything from the, um, uh, the, the freshness and naivety and innocence that a, that a primary school child might have when they ask you a question that they don't know they're not meant to ask. <laughs> And they, you know, why are we doing this? Or what, what's, what's the priest doing with those funny clothes on up the front? Yeah. <laughs> they, uh, or uh, through to uh, you know, someone uh, who's no longer mobile and perhaps in mm -hmm. aged care and, and has the wisdom of, of stories and experience and, and time the time and, a, and an ear that's available to, to really sit with people. Um, each one of us has got a distinct contribution to make. I really enjoyed the, uh, one of the things I enjoyed at ACYF was the, uh, you know, the, the, the fresh ideas and, um, uh, and questions and, and suggestions that some of the young people were making. Um, and I think that's, that's really healthy. You know, it doesn't mean we have to turn everything on its head. I don't think, don't think that helps. But it doesn't hurt <laughs> people asking, well, why don't we? You know, um, what, why are we doing things in a particular way? And one of the things I think that uh, people, as they uh, get older, start to, uh, start to do is they become, we can become a bit too used to the way that things are. It's good to be. It's good to be seeing things with fresh eyes and, and mm. to be asked, you know, why are we doing this? And I know some of the young people who were at ACYF, for instance, again, are involved directly in their local parishes, you know, on parish councils and that sort of thing. And I think that's a that's a really healthy thing. Um, there were certainly uh, young people along, also, for instance, at um, the spirituality in the pub uh, evening. That I uh, that I spoke at in Shepparton back in February feels like another world away. Actually, being as far <laughs> does, away as yeah. Shepparton and having a gathering. I mean, the way people were packed into the room that night, we'd certainly not get away with that now. Um, so, so being part of the church as as uh, as other people, while still you know being mindful that this is a time of um, particularly of learning and finding finding a place. 
one of the things we've got to get better at is giving scope for uh, young people. I'm thinking particularly of young people uh, as they start to leave school. And, you know, through their 20s and even into their 30s, young people are often moving around a lot mm -hmm. between going to uni, starting work, moving from one place to another. An awful lot of our parishes, uh, and not just parishes, you know, pretty well any organisation, especially, you know, local organisations in country towns, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you need to have been in the town for 10 years before you, uh, before you even start to feel like you've got a, a right to, uh, to have a place on a committee or something like yeah. that. I've heard you can't that, consider yourself from Bendigo unless you were born there. Um, I've yeah. been told that multiple times. So, or unless you've got grandkids then, or something. You know, you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so one way or the other. It was one of the things that I uh, that I when I was studying overseas uh, and living there for a while. At one stage, I was involved as chaplain to one of the uh, NATO army bases, and. Uh, there was a, a very vibrant uh, community. Um, you know, three or four hundred would have been along for mass on a Sunday, and from all sorts of uh, countries. And they were uh, you know, largely English speaking, but uh, not exclusively. And one of the things that they, that was really striking about that experience of church, by comparison with what I would normally see in parishes is you would see people stand up one Sunday, every Sunday they had a thing of, uh, you know, are there any new people here uh, that we need to welcome and anyone leaving? Because in the army situation, people are generally only in a posting for two years. So lots of coming and going. So every week they'd say any new people, anybody leaving. And you'd see people get up one Sunday and then two or three weeks later, you'd see them reading at mass or doing, you know, doing the cup of tea or doing something. So it was a much quicker process of jumping in yeah. and a much greater openness to people being part of the community as newcomers. And that's one of the things that I think makes it hard for young people, you know, especially once they're young adults and moving into a place and very aware that they might only be there for a couple of years. Um, yeah. you know, I'm not here on the same basis as someone who's lived here all their life. Um, well, I'd say there's, there's a bit of a, a problem on both sides here. You know, we both, <laughs> both on the people who say, oh, what are you doing, the, the newcomer? But also on our part, if we are new, to think, oh, well, I shouldn't be doing, I shouldn't be jumping in because I am just new. I'd say jump in boots and all and, uh, and have a go. I don't think I remember ever doing that. Um, <laughs> I, and certainly it's not the sort of thing where I have uh, sat down one day and thought, okay, today I'm going to decide that this is what I'm doing with the rest <laughs> of my life. Yeah. Life doesn't work like that. Um, uh, even it certainly doesn't work like that. The people I know who have got married um, and the people, uh, myself included, who have become priests. Um, it's something you grow into the idea of, and part of the growing into that idea is taking it seriously enough to apply to begin the seminary. Um, my own plan in beginning at the seminary was to get this silly idea out of my head so that <laughs> I could get on with the rest of my life. I plan to spend a more... I actually hear you entered the seminary quite young con compared to a lot, of, a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. even in my day. So in my, uh, in my year, there were 10 of us began and uh, I was the youngest. I was uh, not quite 18. I was always young in my year at school and we went through to nearly 30 uh, in my year. And my own thinking was there was other things that uh, that attracted me, but nothing that attracted me the same uh, the same way. And I thought if I go and try one of the other things, it's going to nag at me that maybe this is what I ought to be doing. So the plan was go spend a couple of years, get it out of my system, so I can get on with the rest of my life. <laughs> and um, that has. And how did happened. how did that work out for you? Yeah, not, not so good. Sir. Not so good, Ruth. Um, 
but the decision lots of decision lots of life decisions i think are the sort of things that we almost realize looking back uh you know you have to take discernment very seriously so reflecting on on who i am what i'm called to where my strengths are where where i'm being moved particularly where am i being moved when i'm at peace yeah you don't make big decisions at times when your life's a mess um or you know when you're either really excited or really upset you know you they're not decision making times but over time you know a pattern of discernment of reflection of coming to self-knowledge and thinking about you know what what direction do I want to go? What uh, what sits well? Trying things out, you know, thought experiments, um, thought experiments, and life experiments too. Mm -hmm. You know, be becoming engaged in different things. You know, probably the most significant thing for me in my seminary experience was the year working full time in a parish, living and working in a parish, living with the priests. And it was at the end of, by the end of that, not I'd say by the end of that, that I decided that I wanted to become a priest. I realized that I had decided. Yeah. There's almost, a, it's, a, it's a realizing that this is settled and sits well. So it's an almost in retrospect, I don't think you sit down and make a life decision. You, you have a pattern of thinking about life directions uh, and considering possible decisions and testing out how they sit and eventually realising that you're at peace and ready to move forward. In terms of advice for getting, getting by, uh, try and be sensitive to your needs and the needs of the other people in your house. Uh, you have needs for space for connection uh, for exercise for uh, for eating well for a routine uh, all of that's really important and difficult when we're around people constantly the things that annoy us get uh, annoy us more <laughs> and we know each other too well so try and be as generous as you can to them and to yourself too and then the final thing I'd say is there are things about this that can be a real opportunity. Uh, so I know there are, I wouldn't have chosen to have however many months we're going to have of this sort of stay at home, but there are things about it that I'm really enjoying and I'm getting the opportunity to do that I wouldn't have done otherwise. Um, so this, to have a bit more space in my day is really nice. Um, I'm getting a chance to work through a few bigger projects that I that I would have wanted to do but haven't had a chance to do. Uh, and you know, for for each of us, that will be different. It might be that uh, you know this is a chance to do uh, to do something in the garden or to to learn about cooking uh, or uh, to to do some work on a language or learning a, a musical instrument. I mean, there are or even just to have some space to, to do some reflection. Perhaps uh, Father Brian Boyle's got some really good videos on our website that have just gone up, talking about how to read the scriptures. Uh, that's really helpful. And it's the sort of thing which in the normal run of things, people don't have time for. Yeah, yeah. My, my day's too full most days to be sitting around reading the Bible. Uh, but I've actually got some time. Uh, and I've, I'm not out in the evenings. I've got time in the evenings. Uh, yeah, there's some really good opportunities as well. Uh, this can be, uh, this can have some really um, open up some positive things in our lives as well. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. That's all really, really great advice. And I will be sharing Father Brian's talks um, next week after, after this evening has gone to air. Um, but Bishop Shane, thank you so much for giving us your time and for sharing um, some of your insights and, um, and thoughts on things that are going on at the moment. Um, and we really hope that when we actually do have a stronger rally meeting in person, that you'll be able to come along and actually meet some of the people who come to these events. 
I'm looking forward to it, Ruth. I hope the uh, the gathering on Friday night is really, uh, really a really valuable experience for everyone. Excellent. Thank you very okay. much. So thanks again to Bishop Shane for his time and for everything he's doing at this time for the diocese, the people within it, um, and just just for being him. Um, so if you'd like to see the whole interview, we'll be uploading all 30 minutes of it at some point during the next week. So make sure you're following us on social media for any updates about when we post things like the interview with Bishop Shane. And also, I'd like to give a huge thanks to everyone who sent in your questions over social media over the, in the last week for Bishop Shane. They're definitely added to our chat. So next up, we have a stronger favourite. Um, he's going to share some words of wisdom. And it is, of course, Santa's favourite singing priest, uh, Father Rob Gallia, who, if you're interested, in a week and a bit on Sunday, will be on ABC's Compass, 6.30pm on Sunday. It's where the singing priest comes from. <laughs> and afterwards, I'll let you know how you can win a special merch pack uh, from Father Rob FRG Ministries. So, here's Father Rob. Hey guys, it's such a blessing to be here with you, to be with you virtually, but I'm just so blessed that I get to speak to you even though we're in isolation. I hope you have been doing well and even though it has been a challenging time, a time of change, even though it has been a difficult time for some, but God is still with us. Let's never forget this. And I'm grateful for the team, for the stronger team that have allowed us also to share and to have this stronger rally. I've just um, spoken at a conference in Mississauga in Canada, just like three minutes ago, I finished that conference and now I'm starting this. How awesome is this? There have been challenges, yes, and there are challenges and we're scared and we're fearful and we're living in a new environment but also new and great opportunities that we can reach out to the world through the internet, through social media. You know, usually I'm on a plane 300 times a year, but now I get, to, in my house, I get to reach out to the world. Canada one moment, Australia the next. I'm grateful. But also, apart from new opportunities, there are also challenges, new challenges. And I'm sure you're facing this as well, that you're isolated. All of a sudden, you're finding yourself maybe lonely or maybe feeling like oh, I'm bored, always bored and uh, that you're having to discover new things to do and new things to be around. You know, I don't know. Anyway, I'm blabbing on. But what I'm trying to say is that there are new challenges all the time, but also new opportunities. And uh, there's this theme today, which I absolutely love. It's taken from a psalm, I lift my eyes up to the mountain, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Now when it's talking about mountains, we're not talking about physical mountains, but it's about being with the mind of Christ. St. Paul talks about this, he says, put on the mind of Christ. Be heavenly minded, realize that God is here, be aware of the presence of God in your life. Because we can go through life when we're busy, when we're meeting many people, we're going around and we're doing things, we can so easily forget God. But it's not only when we're busy, even when we're bored. You see, we try to distract ourselves with things like social media and movies, Netflix, Disney+, Plus, all of this, and we get bombarded, our mind gets busy, and God says, stop, stop one moment, and just be heavenly minded. Remember that I'm with you. Remember that I have, I have a heart for you, that I love you. And this song reminds me of, a, actually, this theme reminds me of a song which I used to sing when I, when I was young. I'm going to try and sing it for you. I have my guitar here. Um, here's one I prepared earlier. But uh, this song um, talks about this psalm, um, about lifting our eyes to, to God. I lift my eyes up 
to the mountain Where does my help come from? My help comes from you Maker of heaven Creator of all things Oh how I need you Lord You are my only hope You are my only prayer So I will wait for you To come and rescue me Come and breathe new life That's that, uh, the song, you see it's taken from the psalm, but it ends up with like, you know, asking God to come and rescue us, to rescue our hearts, to rescue our minds, our busy minds, our busy hearts. You see, this is the thing we need to do now more than ever, is to discipline our minds. Where is your mind spending most of its time? Is it on social media? Is it on negative thoughts? Is it on anger and despair, boredom? You see, you have control over where your mind goes. And God asks that our mind be on Him. Turn our minds, turn our minds to the, the mountain where God, our help, our strength is. God is the, is the place that we can go and we can find peace and joy even when the world around us is falling apart. I want to share this, this story. This is a, a story that happened to me a, a, a few years ago. And it was a, in Queensland. And I was there in Queensland and I was going from one, one town to another town in Queensland. And it was one of those stormy days, you know, like where clouds were black and dark. And it was a, a, it was a time that you wouldn't really want to be flying. And so I get to the airport and I'm thinking, I'm hoping like I'm going to be in a big plane. But I get onto, onto the airport and we're boarded onto this like tiny eight-seater going from one place of Queensland to the next. And as I'm seated there in this eight-seater, the pilot's door is open so you can hear the pilot and the co-pilot talking and then there's the air stewardess there and then there are um, passengers, eight passengers including myself. And right next to me was this huge, huge Samoan guy. Beautiful guy, I'm sure, but he was huge. And he's sitting there next to me, partly on his seat and partly on mine as well. And he's, as he's sitting there, we're just uh, having a little conversation. I've never met this guy before. And as we're in the front two seats, and as we're sitting there in the front, I'm, I'm overhearing the, the pilot. The pilot and the co-pilot are having a conversation. And they're talking about whether they should take off or not. Because the thing is, it was just so stormy that the clouds were black, thick black. And th there was lightning, there was thunder, and they didn't know if this plane would be safe enough to fly through that thick storm. And I'm thinking, for goodness sake, if you have any doubt, please don't take off. But they decide to take off. And so the plane goes and we're taxiing towards the runway and we're there on the runway. And everyone's a bit hesitant, everyone's a bit afraid because we could see the thick clouds. It was the middle of the day but it looked like night time. And we're about to take off and we're finally running through the runway going fast. And there's strong winds and so the plane starts to shake. And finally we get off the ground but as soon as we get off the ground the plane starts to shake even more. Then we get into the clouds and boom, just blackness, just darkness hits the plane. And not only that, the plane starts to shake and rock violently as we crash through the storms and people on the plane start to panic and you hear people screaming and crying and the plane is shaking even more violently right now and all of a sudden the Samoan guy grabs my hand and he holds my hand in panic <laughs> and I'm looking at him and he's looking at me and he doesn't care he's just so terrified and we're going and as we're taking we're still going up and up and up and finally finally we get through the cloud and there's bright white light that enters into the plane immediately an incredible sense of calm hits the whole plane. 
everyone's quiet, everyone's calming down, but the Samoan guy is still holding my hand and I sort of gently pull away and we just don't talk about it. But you see, at that moment, I, s I realized something. This is very much how life is sometimes, that we go through times where it is dark, where it's uncertain and unsure, and we're wondering what's going on, where is life going to take us right now at the moment? We don't know where life is going to take us. Are we going to get back to school? Are we going to do this? Are we going to do that? And we have questions, can we survive being at home like this? Can we survive going back to school when we have to get back to school? And we have questions and it seems like we don't want to face the storm. But then, at times, we're in a really deep, thick storm and our lives are shaken all over the place and we're worried and we're anxious and we don't even know if we're going to be able to survive. But the thing is we have to hold on, hold on because eventually just like that plane we're going to get through the storm and we're going to experience the white light, the peace, the joy in this life. You see, even though the storm was there, the sun was there too. The sun never moved, the sun never changed, the bright light was always there. Even when I was on the ground and there was a storm ahead, even in the storm, the sun still was shining. The same brightness that when I was on the ground or when I was in the middle or when I was on top, the sun never stopped shining. But the thing is, I couldn't see it because of the, the clouds. We couldn't see it because of the storm. We couldn't experience it. But it was always there. It never left. It didn't think, oh, it's a sunny, it, it's a stormy day, so I'm not going to go out today. No, the sun came out anyway, but we just couldn't see it from down there. But this is the same with God. God is with us. God is present even when we go through moments of fear, of anxiety, even when we go through storms of life. God is there. He never stops being there. But we need to be reminded that God is there even when we're in the storm. And how do we do that? By turning our eyes towards the mountain, turning our eyes towards Jesus, towards God who is our help even through the storm even through the runways of life. But we need to spend time with Jesus, with our heads above the clouds. We need to spend time listening to the voice of God. Because there are thousands and millions of voices that speak to us in our lives. Voices of negativity, voices of sin, voices of, of desperation. But what voice is the loudest in your life? Is it the voice that is coming from God's mountain or is it the voice of this world the voice that is around us the voice of what social media is telling you the voice of what the news is telling you the voice of what your frustrated emotions are telling you spend time with Jesus spend time with your eyes above looking at the mountains looking at the love of God there you're gonna find your peace there you're gonna find your strength I know you can do this. I know that even though this might be a difficult time, never forget that God is with you, that God has called you to greatness, that God has called you to joy, and that you can be the happiest person in your household, and you can be the happiest person alive, because you know that even though it is difficult, God is with you. I'm praying for you guys, and I just pray that God will continue to give you peace and joy. Let me just pray a blessing over you. So, Lord God, I thank you for these, your people whom you love so much. Father God, I just pray that you give them this grace to keep their eyes focused on the mountain where their help comes from, from you, maker of heaven and earth. Lord, I just pray that your peace flood their souls, flood their lives, your bright white light. Give them joy, give them you, even though they go through the storm. And I ask your blessing upon them, your peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you and enjoy the rest of the rally. Does anyone else have Father Rob's song, Higher Than the Clouds, stuck in their head right now? 
We've added it to our Greater Heights Spotify playlist. The link is in the description um, in case you'd like to check it out. But I would really like to see a recording of that psalm. I mean, wow. Um, hopefully Father Rob might be able to share a link of someone else doing a version of it, but I'd love to see him do it. Anyone else? Um, Anyway, I feel that Father Rob has really been able to get to the heart of some of the fears and anxieties I know I have been experiencing at this time. Um, and that reminder that the sun never disappears even when we can't see it. I mean, that's just powerful. It's simple and it's powerful. So I hope that you got as much out of it as I did. I know I definitely really enjoyed watching um, and listening to what he had to say. So now, I bet you're all wondering how you could win something. Over on our Instagram and Facebook uh, pages, you can see the terms and conditions for this competition. But I want you to send us at Stronger Youth, so you DM or post and tag us. Um, so you're going to send us a photo or a photo of some art or something that shows us how you're reminding yourself that God is here, even through the storms. So get creative. I love creativity. And it's probably the most creative responses that have the strongest possibility of winning. And make sure it's your own work. Uh, if you're sending me a photo, I don't want to see some, some stock photo. Take a photo. Create something. Go for it. It's going to be fun. Um, and you could um, go in to the draw to win an FRG ministry or a Father Rob merch pack. Um, so there will be two up for grabs um, and they'll be full of some amazing things. So check out our Facebook and Instagram pages to see exactly what's in those packs. Now we have a very special message, another special message from another person overseas. Um, this time from our good friend Christopher Mueller. Now we we're a little bit sad, a lot sad, um, earlier in the year, um, about a month or so, yeah a month, three weeks ago, um, when Christopher actually had to hop on a plane home to Germany. Christopher had spent the last seven or so months, can't even remember when he got here, it feels like he's been here for so long, but he spent some time working with us and with FRG Ministry um, and, and because of um, COVID-19, he has made the choice to return home earlier than anticipated. And we're absolutely devastated. I know he's really sad, but he has sent us all a really, really lovely message tonight. So let's have a listen. Hey guys, this is Christopher from Germany. Uh, a few of you might know me from the last Stronger Rally where I've given a speech about the domino effect. Unfortunately, I can't be with you at this Stronger Rally. I really would have loved to join you, but um, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, I can't uh, be with you. And I had to leave Australia after living for seven months in Benigo. So now I'm back in Paderborn in Germany, where I'm originally from. I'm sitting here on my tiny little uh, balcony with beautiful weather. It's spring in Germany, so that's very nice. Um, and I want to talk with you about um, a few things. The first thing is, for me now being back in Germany is um, quite hard to actually feel like settled down, feel like I arrived um, fully because I can't see my friends, I can't visit them, uh, I can't play soccer with my friends, which I really enjoy, um, I can't go to the hairdresser, which I think I need. <laughs> and. Um, it's it's quite hard um yeah feeling back at home um, without um, these things so but i want to talk with you not about all these disadvantages there are a lot of them but there are also a lot of advantages so what i really think about these these days is what is important for me in life what's what what do i really know now that there are so many restrictions so many rules by the government laws um, what I can't do, what are the basic things, what, I, what, do, what do I need um, in these times, what can I do, um, do I really, uh, what do I love, I love 
to, to read, for example, or spending time with my family. So maybe that's a question which is important to think about. What is important for you in life? Um, what is something you don't need internet access to, to um, or any, any other technical device? What is really important for you and what you can do? What can, can you do every time, every day? Um, I think that's a very important question. And with that comes the question about communication, because in this time, communication for me, um, I really like journalism, so that's also a reason for that, but um, I think communication plays a very important role, not only in the media, but also by ourselves. So what is the message? What is the intention I want to um, give another person? So do you want to, to spread fear? Or do I want to spread hope with my communication, the way I communicate with my friends, with my family? Um, also, um, now the communication kind of changed. So I communicate much more with my friends over um, the internet. I play uh, now lots, lots more games with my friends uh, in the internet. So that's also another way of communication. And for me, being back at home after such a long time, it's also uh, important for me, uh, or what I find it quite interesting because most of the friends and people who, um, who I spend most of my time with, they all expect this old version of me, Christopher, coming back to um, Germany. But obviously um, I kind of changed during my time spending seven t or living for seven months away from home. So it's always important to communicate with um, my environment, with all my friends. Um, what is now important for me? How did I change? Um, uh, and uh, I think especially during the time of all the restrictions, uh, when we spend most of our time uh, with our family and people who, who we really like, I think it's important to communicate the way we communicate with lots of hope, with strength, to give each other strength, but also to ask the other person what are their interests, what do they like, what do they need in life. So um, we can get through this time very, very, very easily, very safe, and that we can, and that we care for each other, and um, yeah, give us other, other, give each of other, give each of us <laughs> uh, a sign of uh, hope and strength, and yeah, maybe think about what's the way you communicate in your daily life with your friends and family. All right, that's for me. All the best from Paderborn. God bless, and uh, auf Wiedersehen. Bye. Speak into the darkness, speak into my soul When I'm overwhelmed and I've lost control Will you be the light that guides the way before me? So out of the shadows I know I will stand strong Oh, I need Oh, I need your peace So dwell within my heart so I may see Oh, I need your light Oh, I need your peace So dwell within my heart so I may see You are the light within me Show me the way Help me to shine brighter Help me to shine brighter You are the light within me You're showing me the way Help me to shine brighter For the world surrounding me Passion, fill me with belief. I pray that I'm the first to love when others fail to see. I will walk beside you if you will trust in me. I will be the 
the light you need if you will believe oh i need your light oh i need your peace dwell within my heart so i may see cause i need your light and i need your peace so dwell so I may see Cause you are the light within me You're showing me the way Help me to shine brighter Help me to shine brighter You are the light within me You're showing me the way Help me to shine brighter to shine brighter, help me to shine brighter for the world surrounding me. For the world surrounding me, And that was, of course, another fantastic song from the incredible Jen Bryant. Uh, it's a really nice song to sit back and spend some time reflecting on everything that we've heard tonight or just everything that's going on at the moment. And to spend some time offering up a prayer that, a really important prayer, that we can really allow God's light into our hearts. Um, it links beautifully in with Father Rob's message about... Um, remembering that the sun is there even when it's hidden um, but really um, take the time go back and listen to it again over the weekend um, spend some time with it it's a beautiful beautiful song so thanks Jen we'll be seeing you again very very soon so I'd now like to hand over to Sandhurst's own Jackson Saunders one of our seminarians um, he has interviewed six young adults from within the diocese. So let's see what they've got to say. Tell us about your situation at the moment. In here, I found it busy because I also work, study, and do the, I also do teaching. I, I also teach my nephew and nieces in here in the, in the house. So. It's busy right now for me. I'm still sort of learning how to teach as it is only being one term in. Um, so definitely learning a lot uh, teaching at home. Uh, but yeah, it has presented some, some new challenges. Especially in these times, very important to have a laugh. And I myself am always, as you would know, having a bit of a laugh, always with a smile on my face. I think, uh, I think I've got the same situation as many other people. It's definitely been challenges in some areas but the best part about it is finding different ways to connect with different people and finding ways um, to help other people uh, through this challenging time. It's been almost six weeks for me. I have a pretty low immune system so I had to be locked up about Oh, 10, 12 days more than everybody else, which has been annoying. It's a very strange time, but then again, on the lighter side of things, you know, doing things from the usual seminary way of life now in, in this parish here at St. Killian's, it is an opportunity for me to do things that I am not used to do in the seminary, but now which I miss doing back in the Philippines, like cooking, gardening, and uh, be able to read more books. Have there been any hobbies or fun activities that you've been doing to sort of help to pass the time? Dancing is one of my things that I enjoy doing um, to pass the time. No, I don't really dance. <laughs> <laughs> I don't dance. <laughs> well, my mum is a dance teacher too, and I can say that I only know one dance move, so I'm not the best dancer myself. 
I've got two dogs, so they've been keeping me company. So this is Snowy. She's Hello, a multi shoe. He's a bit of a sock. And then I've got Sooty, which is a bit of a crazy one. This is Sooty. And she's Maltese Cross Pug. I've been running a little bit, but no, it is hard. We're just in an apartment here in Carlton. I'm very jealous of uh, mum and dad back home in Shepparton and have a, a two acre block. So I'm jealous that they've been able to go out in the yard and into the garden. How are you using your faith to support you through these challenging times? I've been really connecting with Father Rob's online masses on a Sunday. I've found them to be really um, good for my faith. I'm also meditating um, every morning, which has really helped me just to, to ground myself in, in kindness and love every morning, which has helped with so much uncertainty um, and questions at, at this time. And I have my uh, app in my phone that uh, gives me verses every day and I meditate on it. Uh, meditate on it. I just uh, listen to Christian music that helps me calm. It calms me, and it's just good to hear praises and worship songs. I was very interested uh, when I saw that they were going to be streaming the services online. Uh, I was very excited to hear that. And as I tuned into one of the services, I realised um, that the cantor of the choir was singing in the service and I recognised a few of the hymns and I thought, I just have to sing along um, and feel like I'm actually there. And so I did that for uh, the services that I could tune into and it was very fulfilling and made me feel like I wasn't missing out as much. As a seminarian, I still do my morning prayer in private and uh, we said we have this um, daily noontime mass which is um, broadcasted via facebook through um, saint killian's parish facebook page that's every day at 12 10 p.m and uh, we also have the 9 p.m rosary and exposition of the blessed sacrament which is really a uh, spirit filled practices and i could not say that it is a boring life. I would say it is a spirit-filled experience. I love the sense of community. So one thing that I, I'm a big introvert, without a doubt, but the fact that, you know, when I went to Mass before isolation began, it was a sense of community, which I really liked. And the fact that even though it's on a screen, it, knowing that there's still people present watching and it's still like that sense of community which I kind of long for during this time and also I pray the rosary every day anyway before I go to bed so it's such a nice way to be able to wrap it up and just live stream it and things like that it's really nice. It's great to chat with you and your example I suppose will encourage a lot of other young people in their own faith through these challenging times. Thanks for being with us. No problems, thank you. Thanks, Jackson. Peru, and thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Jacko. Thank you. Thanks, Jackson, and all of your interviewees. It was absolutely fantastic to hear from all of you. And if you viewers would like to see the unedited interviews, we'll be posting all six of them on the Santos Youth YouTube channel over the next two weeks. We'll also share them on social media so you'll know when they're available. Um, now, I'm incredibly excited about this. I'm excited about a lot of tonight, but this, this is just a very, very special thing to have happened. Um, a last minute addition to our lineup, but definitely not the last part of tonight. So don't, don't stop watching yet. Um, I'd really love to introduce to you all this incredibly inspiring speaker. He was last seen in Australia jumping all over the stage at ACYF. But now he's joining us here tonight. Um, this is Joe Malandres, everybody. Stronger tonight. What's happening? I'm Joe Melendrez. So thankful to be here with you guys, coming to you all the way from Los Angeles, California. We are quarantined, but we are still connected. Can I get an amen? 
All right, well today I wanna to be sharing a little message for you called Moving On Up. You know, when I was 15 years old, I encountered Jesus for the first time. To be, to be honest with you, I wanted to be a professional performer. I didn't even know who God was. He wasn't even a part of my plan. But when I met Jesus, something changed inside of me. I was like, oh my gosh, my purpose, like everything. I was like, wow, now I can do something for someone and still use the gifts and talents he's given me. But at age 15 years old, I started this journey. But ever since I started following Jesus, I felt that I was moving on up. Because where is up? Up is heaven. We should always be striving towards heaven. If we're in Jesus, we are always moving up. We're moving heavenward. So I have a podcast. It's called The Mission Driven Podcast. Feel free to subscribe. And uh, the reason I started is because so many people I ask, like, what's our mission as a disciple? And they're like, well, I don't know. Love God, love people, this and that. And I'm like, you know what? Our mission from Jesus, do you know what it is? He said, go and make disciples of all nations. That's our mission. We are disciple makers, but are we doing that? So I started this podcast and I bring on different guests and I talk to them about their mission in life. And sometimes I ask them this question. I say, what is a goal that you have in your life? And so many of them say to get to heaven. Guys, every day we can take steps in the direction of heaven. So uh, I'm going to share with you today uh, three God thoughts or three points I think that can help you today, encourage you wherever you are. So if you're with me, let me hear you say, yeah, let me hear you say, yeah. All right. Point number one, write it down. If you want to take some notes, it could be helpful. I want you to lean in to this. This message today is God is able. Say it with me one more time. Ready? And God is able. Guys, let's just grasp this for a sec. God can do all things. It says in scripture, we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. Anything is possible. The Holy Spirit conceived Jesus in a teenager. Like that's like impossible. Like no way. Come on. God specializes in impossible. Uh, So I love this what it says in Ephesians 3.20. It says this. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. God is able to do more than we can ask or imagine. Come on, let's go, Jesus. He can do more. Everybody say, God can do more. See, I love it says his power is at work within us. Just because we have a a virus that's taking over the world doesn't mean his power stops pumping through us, but we got to realize it, recognize it, and then reclaim it. God's power is within us. And with God, the possibilities are limitless. You see, God has no limits. He can do anything and everything. Now, I want you to know that God is still in control. There's a preacher named Devon Franklin, and he said, don't let the virus take your vision. So important that just because we are uh, in this odd and interesting season that we can still have God vision. We can fix our eyes on Jesus. We can continue dreaming. We can continue praying and we continue pressing forward and moving on up. Okay. That was point number one. Point number two. I love this one. His ways are higher. I'm going to flash back to when I was a kid. Now I was a pretty good kid. Raise your hand if you were somewhat of a troublemaker. Okay, raise your hand if you like, I listen most of the time. Okay, that was me. I was like number two most of the time. And my mom sometimes would get after me and she would say, Joe, I, I hope you're telling the truth. I'm like, mom, I promise I'm telling the truth. You can ask God when we get to heaven. So I was, I was like, you know, God knows. God knows and mom, you're going to know someday when you ask him. It was just so funny as a kid. That's what my response was. But God knows his ways are higher than our ways. Let's check it out. In Isaiah 55, it says this. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts higher than your thoughts. You see, God is a mystery. 
And we need to come to peace with that while we're on earth. We're never going to fully understand God, maybe until the day we meet him face to face. But I want to let you know, God knows what he's doing. You know, we see right now in the present, we see our, our circumstances right now, but God sees the past, he sees the present, and he sees the future. He is the beginning and the end. And God's going to take care of you. You do not need to worry. It says that in scripture. Do not be anxious about anything. But I love your theme verse in Psalm 121. It says this, the Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forever. God's here to take care of us. You don't need to worry about a thing. He's going to keep you from all harm. Can you say all harm? All harm. Let's go. Forevermore. God is with you. He is by your side and he's never going to leave you. So many of us feel right now like giving up. Like, Joe, I I'm losing hope. Joe, I don't know what's going to happen in the world. I'm doubting my faith. Maybe I'm stopping my prayers but I want to encourage you today that God will finish what he started. That's point number three. Go ahead and write it down. Our last point today. God will finish what he started. It says in Philippians 1.6, Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Mm. That's so good. God will finish what he started. He who began a good work in you. Right now, God's working something good inside of you. You might not see it, but it says in scripture that God will work all things together for good for those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. You see, God wants you on his team. God doesn't need you, but he wants you. He chose you. There is purpose all over your life. If you are alive right now and you are breathing, there is a purpose and a calling on your life. But so many times we don't even listen. We don't even hear the voice of God because we don't give him that time. But God's talking to you. He's talking to me. He's talking to us. He wants us to be stronger tonight. He wants us to move on up in the name of Jesus towards heaven. You know, this can build endurance and build strength. You know, he gave us the Holy Spirit, which is like a spiritual GPS. We don't know where we're going. The Holy Spirit is here. It's our counselor. It's our advocate. It's our encourager. The Holy Spirit has our back. The Holy Spirit is always leading us towards heaven, leading us towards Jesus. You know, I know some of you right now also might be in pain. I know that it's been hard for me. Um, my full-time job is uh, a, like a hip-hop missionary. I go and speak and perform at schools and churches all over the world. And I'm so thankful for, for that calling. But right now, I, I'm at home. And you know what? I, I miss being able to serve different communities. But I'm so thankful to be here with my family. But it's been a shift for me. So I'm so thankful for this opportunity to talk to you guys all the way in Australia. But if you're going through pain right now, I want you to pray through that pain. I want to share a final story today. And thank you so much for allowing me to share with you. My final story today, I had the opportunity to go to school in Hawaii. I know, praise the Lord. Uh, when I was 19 years old, it was my sophomore year in college. And my roommate and I came with this crazy idea that we we're going to run around the island of Oahu in six days. It's like 121 miles. It's completely nuts, I know. Uh, but we were doing it uh, for, it was called Run for Relief. And we were going to raise funds to help um, with the hurricane victims of Hurricane Katrina that happened in Louisiana. So uh, we start running, all right? We trained not a whole lot, but we trained a little bit. Um, so we start running day one. I get up to mile number eight and my knee starts locking and I'm in pain. I'm like, oh no, I got a whole lot more miles to go and days of running to go. How am I going to complete this, Jesus? So I pray through the pain. I said, Jesus, listen, um, I really want to glorify you with this, with this trip, with this run. If it's possible for you to please heal me, that would be 
incredible. Uh, I love to proceed, love to finish the race. So Jesus, uh, if you could just unlock my knee, please, please. I continue to pray, I continue to pray, continue to pray. Well, all of a sudden, my knee gets unlocked and I keep running. My knee doesn't lock anymore for the entire rest of the 120 miles. Praise God. But I had to, one, reach out to God in my time of need and my time of pain. And I had to have confidence in him that he who began this good work could finish this work. So I want to encourage you one final verse from Hebrews 12. It says, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. Let's pray together, guys. If you can, whatever, get in a comfortable position. Maybe put your hands out as a form of surrender and repeat after me. Say, dear God, I know you are able. I know you are with me right now. Thank you so much for this time together. Lord, I pray that I may have the strength to realize you are who you say you are. Lord, you can finish what you started. Lord, we believe with so much faith in our hearts, Lord, that you can heal our land, God. Lord, we don't want to do life without you. We cry out to you during our time of need. We cry out to you to bless our families. Lord, we know now there is purpose in our lives. We thank you for this day and we lift up our lives to you and rededicate our lives to you right now in Jesus' name. Can I get an amen? Amen. Well, God bless you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Joe Melendres. I hope to see you guys in the near future. Guys, we are quarantined, but still connected. Stronger tonight. Let's go. Now, I'm not usually someone who talks to the TV, but there's something about Joe that has me responding when he asks. Um, having Joe... Uh, be a part of Stronger Tonight is one of those unimaginable things for a normal Stronger Rally. One of the benefits of an online event um, is that it opens up our opportunities to bring different and, and incredibly gifted international speak, uh, speakers to share with you all. And this is not something that we could normally do. So it is one of those benefits of everything that's going on right now. Um, now, just like Father Rob, Joe also has some really cool merch on his website. You should go check out his website. He's got some really great stuff over there, including the podcast that he mentioned. Um, we've placed an order for um, his fantastic soap prayer journal, S-O-A-P. It's a type of prayer. Check it out. Um, and we have, or at some point we will have, two copies to give away. Again, like with the previous giveaway... All terms and conditions will be on our social media page. Um, and we'll be drawing this around 5 p.m. on Monday. Give me a little bit of time in case people are sending me things at the last minute. So how do I win? I imagine you all sitting there asking your screen because we've gotten so good at doing that. Um, well, we want you to share with us some scripture that inspires you to greater heights. Don't go borrowing Joe's. Don't go borrowing ours. Um, what you need to do is DM us or comment or post a cool image and um, tag us explaining why this scripture inspires you. Um, and I think this is a really great chance. Again, like the previous one, get creative. I am so into people getting creative with their responses. It's, it's how you win, guys. Um, think outside the box a little bit, but also be true to you. If it doesn't inspire you, don't go with it. Um, so the comp, as I said, closes Monday at 5 p.m. Um, and all the information will be on the Stronger Youth Instagram, Facebook, Twitter pages. So check those out. Um, and lastly, remember, it will take a little while for those to arrive. We don't know how regular um, shipments and mail come, are coming from America at the moment. So another huge thanks to Joe for, for giving up some time to be a part of this. But now, really, really importantly, everyone, we all get to turn our attention to our expert panel. 
you'll understand why I say expert like that when you see them. I don't think that they're expert to such, but they're amazing people. I loved getting to have a chat with these guys. Um, three young Catholics, um, all who are either in the diocese or have recently moved away from the diocese. And they're going to answer the questions that you guys all sent in over social media over the last week or two. So, here's our expert panel. Hi everyone and welcome to our Q&A or our panel discussion today. We have three amazing guests. I'm really excited that these people, well, they agreed to have a chat with me. So um, welcome, let's start with uh, Jasmine. Um, welcome, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi Ruth, so yeah, so I'm a current uni student who is currently working from home um, and have been involved with like the Strong Youth and Sanitized Youth Ministry for a few years now. Moving on, we have uh, right down here, we have Mason. Tell us a bit Hi. about you. Hi, I'm Mason, I'm a 19 year old Worker dude, um, <laughs> don't know how to describe myself. Uh, I am currently working from home, loving it. Um, I do own my own business doing sound and lighting, um, and I've been involved with Stronger Youth for quite a few years now. Absolutely love getting involved, doing any kind of multimedia stuff, emceeing, just, you know, loving God. Um, and the last person joining us today, um, all the way from WA, we have Samuel. Hey guys. Um, so I am currently, well, currently unemployed, one so due to Corona, um, but you know, so, such is life. But yeah, look, really, really enjoying this time off um, and just loving life. I have been involved in Stronger in the past actually to work with Ruth up until the end of last year, Ruth and I worked together. Um, absolutely love my time in Victoria. Um, yeah, so that's me in a nutshell. What are you working on? Are you working on any special projects or have, have you picked up a hobby or a skill? Been trying, definitely trying, is the right word here, to become more flexible. Um, oh, wow. I'm extremely unflexible. Um, so I've actually, <laughs> I have actually been trying to uh, do like a stretch routine um, and just trying to really just, you know, do that every day. I try to be read, reading more. Um, I, I haven't really done enough reading in the past, so I just trying to do a bit more reading that, and become more knowledgeable. That is impressive. Jasmine, what about you? Um, I've been like keeping creative. Um, I've just been, I do some like watercoloring and brush lettering. So yeah, so trying to keep up with some um, daily like lettering stuff to try and practice, but then keep myself like, I know, like entertained, yeah. Whilst not being able to go out, yeah. No, that's that's a really cool thing to do. I actually have no skills in that area, and I wish that I did. Maybe I will try it at some point. <laughs> Mason, what about you? Yeah, look, I mean, I'm a complete nerd. Like, you know, love my job way too much. So I've actually been doing parts of my job that I don't get time to do. So I've actually been doing things like dusting my equipment oh. and, you know, doing some some planning and online learning courses about some equipment. So kind of boring stuff, but awesome stuff to me. And then I've actually been like spending time with my family and loving what? it. Yeah, I know. So good. That's really, that's really cool. Are you doing anything with your family in particular or just hanging We've out? We've been loving some games of Uno because, you know, feats, all the family can do it. Although my 50-year-old dad is the only one who seems to be out struggling at it. He just couldn't, couldn't grasp the concept. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I think it's absolutely fantastic when you play with, um, play with people. Did your dad go in a little bit sort of like, um, I'm going to win this? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 He, he's good um, at every other card game, but you know, just stumped him. Yeah, it's for really some cool. reason, my, my dad does the same thing. He goes into things thinking, yeah, I've got this. And then um, we show that we've got more skill than him. <laughs> I reckon. <laughs> We had someone send in a question um, about how how we're finding God in our everyday lives right now because obviously we're spending more time at home. It's a little bit trickier to get out um, to a church or even out to the great outdoors where um, I know I like to go to the mountains to find God, great place to go, but you can't really do that at the moment. So how are you finding God at the moment? Um, look, for me, for me, this definitely is 
is one thing I'm trying to do as well is also make sure I go for a walk every day. So my housemate and I will we go for a walk every day and we will pray a rosary and t- together as we're walking along the beach. Um, so that's definitely one way that I'm doing it. But also I'm because I've been having so much more time, sort of quiet time as well. I've even got to the point where I'm I'll get earplugs. I put earplugs in and just you know say God, what do you want to say to me today? And I found, you know, and it's so self and, you know, God speaks to people in the silence. So I really, I'm literally forcing myself into the silence and saying, you know, God, what is it you want to say to me? And um, it's been really, it's been really good, a really good experience, actually. Um, at the start, it was, you know, it was, I'd sit there for 10 minutes or so and I'm sort of, I start to fidget and I, and I couldn't, and I'd be like, hey, I've had, I've had enough. But now, the longer, the more, it's, it's like anything, the more you practice, the more you get, you get, the better you get at things. So that's, that's how I've been finding God. Yeah, no, I find that really interesting. I'm in somewhat of a similar, the silence thing's very interesting. Um, it's, I've had a lot, of, a lot of time. My job usually involves lots of sound and lots of things going on and busy running around. And it's been interesting having time of just silence where you go, oh, let's have a think. Um, and yeah, and listen to God. Like it actually gives you a chance to to take a break and really listen to God. And and some of the things, you know, I love nature, similar to what you're saying, Ruth, in in, in seeing God's creation for us. Uh, and so just sometimes just sitting and listening and hearing, you know, the birds chirp or you know the wind blow. I just find that really interesting. And and I feel the power of God. I think that's that's when I feel when I see nature mm-hmm. and and these things that are going on in life. They're so powerful. They're crazy. They're intense. But looking for those smaller things where God's working and um, the small miracles I think that are happening in our lives. That's where I seem to be seeing God in my life. Yeah, it's definitely been different, like, because you can't go to, like, churches and um, all of that sort of thing. Um, So staying with the creative thing, I've been using this colouring book that um, I haven't looked at since I got it at ACYF and it was one of those things I brought. I was like, oh, I'll use that some stage, but Anyways, um, but it's got a little scripture um, and then it has next to it on the next page an image which represents the scripture. Um, so I've been reading the scripture and then whilst reflecting on it, I've been colouring in. Um, and it's just that silence and that um, time just to take a step back from the craziness which is happening with um, uni and um, everything else and just to sort of just sit there and just reflect upon the scripture and like what you think is going like what's trying to be said to you mm-hmm. and then put that into what you're drawing so yeah I've been finding that really beneficial um so you've all touched a little bit on it in your own ways on um on prayer at the moment um I know when this um time of isolation started um I was finding it really difficult personally to pray I just I just sort of my routine was gone and and it took me a little while to get back into it but are you doing anything maybe a little bit different or unusual or have you got any suggestions for people for what they could be doing for me it's actually things like podcasts so I actually went and started listening to the Catholic influencer podcast as well as a whole bunch of other you know random um, faith-based podcasts and just spent some time listening and I think that helps me sometimes interpret and understand what's going on I think sometimes you know you can read the bible you can read the scripture but sometimes having someone put their little twist on it and go hey have you thought about this um yeah being home and the fact that a lot of things are changing to online it's given um us an ability to access things which maybe we wouldn't um so like yeah I've been finding that the resources online, such as like the online adorations, um, mm. the daily masses, um, the reflections, um, you know, um, the Instagram stories, which people um, might put up like about the, the daily prayer. The weekday morning prayer that's happening over on Santos Youth Ministry. Is that like, <laughs> that, that helping you exactly out at all? Exactly like that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Good. yeah no, it's actually been really bad because like, like stuff like that, like, um, like, you know, I have a brother and, um, like, he, through school, like, they have their morning prayers. But we sit down and watch that one, for example, in the morning just before we sort of step into our day um, before everything gets too hectic. We've got this assignment and 
um, this class to make sure we have to go to. So yeah, it's just good to um, you know be able to take time to use the internet to be able to like focus on our faith too. Yeah, look, I think I'm um, similar thing to my uh, to um, Mason actually. I've I've been going and look listen to a lot of Father Mike Schmitz um, on uh, a yeah. session presents. Really, always, really always good. good. Yeah. Yeah, been loving his content. Um, and I think the thing is, I haven't, a friend of I, we actually haven't done this yet, but we talked about it last week. He, he said to me, he goes, oh, do you want to, do you want to, you know, like do like a Bible study? I was like, what do you mean? It's like, well, if we both read so a certain passage of the Bible, and then, then I'll call you at some point and you call, well, you call me and, and would you want to discuss it? I thought, actually, that's a really good idea. Um, literally, it was, it was only late last week, so I haven't, haven't started it yet, but definitely uh, we're hoping to get that up and going for the next couple of days and also praise and worship i just been <laughs> get the sh- i get the shower the praise and worship goes on the microphone comes out the concert's <laughs> going on i'm singing my heart out so you know totally agree that's, that's, totally agree yeah that is it yeah. is fantastic loving it yeah but i'm loving um matt Mars new album um and the rent collective's new album is amazing as well um, anyone got any other music that they're loving at the moment? Matt, I, I don't know. Matt Mars, Matt Mars' new album. I'm loving that. Yeah, um, and I know Jasmine, especially... you are too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a classic like Ren Collective and Hillsong. Yeah, they always nice. seem to just pop up in my feed. I'm like, oh, all right. If I get... <laughs> oh, if I have yeah. to. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So one of the things that um, we're obviously called to do as, as Christians, as disciples of Jesus, is is this element of service um, as seen, as Jesus demonstrated time and time again. Um, And what kind of things are you doing um, to keep that element of um, service alive in your life at the moment? I'm, yeah, so very blessed to be living with someone else during this time. I think if if I was living alone, it would definitely be a lot harder. But even if it's the simple things like, you know, making a cup of tea for them in the morning Mm -hmm. or or cooking lunch, our neighbour, she's a lovely old lady, um, she's been needing to do a lot of Zoom calls and stuff. For her, um, for her, it is, in this case, she's not great with technology. So I'll, she'll say, oh, Samuel, can you come help me? I want to listen. I want to, I want to tune into this Zoom call. I can't remember how. So I'll say, like, no worries. I'll, and I'll, I'll, yeah. So I'll duck over and I'll, I'll give her a hand. Or if, um, if, you know, if she needs a hand doing something, I'll say, yeah. And also, I think, I think, um, one thing that I, is also is, is phoning a friend saying, are you okay? Yeah. Um, you know, how are you going? And, and really just having that conversation of, you know, how, how, are you, how are you going through this time? Yeah, and after moving back home from moving into uni, um, yeah, just trying to help out everyone here in the house. Like, you know, if someone needs help with work or um, IT or, like, it just depends. Like, just helping um, wherever you can to try and, make sure that the stress of this time isn't impacting as much as what it would without that help. You look, I totally agree with a bit of both of that. I love the whole helping your neighbour and being able to help. Oh, is he going? Oh, it's bad. Ooh, you um, swapped. You just oh. swapped. <laughs> wow, okay, cool. Um, I definitely say, yeah, small things. So a cup of tea, uh, you know, I've cooked a couple of batches of biscuits, just little things that I'm able to do to help um, pay my dues in the house and help people feel better in this time. The last question I've got before we sort of start wrapping up, um, how can we help those who act Catholic around some people but act like atheists around others? And just before I pass over to anyone else, I think this is um, this is a really interesting one because I know maybe on a different level, we all have people or we all act differently in front of different people. Um, but I actually had a... A really, really quick chat to the bishop about this one earlier. We didn't get to it in our actual conversation, but he said that's a normal thing. It's just when our values change that the problem is, and that's I think what's a little bit of happening here is some values are changing. But what do you think? Well, how would you handle that if you had a, a, a close friend? Let's assume it's a very close friend, not just a random person. And what would you do if you've established a really good honesty with them? maybe you could try and have a conversation about like where they sort of stand with everything. Um, Cause sometimes it's not like, I don't know. I feel like sometimes it's also a bit of peer pressure 
um, depending on the pe- people that they're around to try and change, to try and fit into yeah. like a particular mold um, when it's okay to be yourself. It's about, it's also about challenging and saying, are you being true to yourself? Mm. Are you mm. being, are you, you know, you're trying to live a double life here, you know, but you can't, you can't live two lives. And to try and live two lives is really tiring and really exhausting. Yeah. You've, you've, you've got to say to them, you know, are you, you know, yes, you might be afraid of rejecting rejection, but in a way you're rejecting part of who you are. If you can't be who you want to, if you can't be who you are around the people in the same way. So, and I think it's, we all fear rejection in some way, but we have to come to a point like we're in, whether we're scared of others rejecting us, but in a way we're also reject, rejecting ourselves in a way, because we're going, actually, this is, this is who I want to be, but I'm scared to be who I am around these people. So you have to, you have to really turn and say, and say, you know, are you being honest to yourself? And yeah, you know, and it's, it is, it is, it's a really, it is a really hard one. Um, but but also, it's it's definitely a case of approaching it with with great love, and understanding that this person might yeah you know, they might want to be out of be Catholic, but they're so scared of being rejected for it. Yeah, look, I totally agree, and I, and I think I've even been that friend. Um, I, I think coming into my first couple of years in Stronger, it was really hard. You know, as as Sam said, it's that fear of rejection. It's that fear of what are my friends going to think about me or what's this yeah. person, you know, oh, I, I can't act like this around this person, but that's it's okay when I'm here and, and this different double, it's tiring. It's, it's hard. Yeah. Um, and I think one of my first, my first, after my first stronger retreat, um, something clicked and, and a little bit of change. And I think, as you said, Sam, it was that love and that care that the people around me gave and, you know, not trying to push me and go, why aren't you doing this, this forcefulness? It's about this love and this caring and, and, and that constant invitation to, hey, God's here if you want to come to this or do you want to come pray with us? Do you want to, these little things. And I think the first thing that really ticked over for me was in previous conversations with people, someone would say, oh, so you went to the Stronger Retreat. Do you believe in God? You know, so around them, at some people I'd go, oh, pff, no, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, mm. just went because it was fun. And I think after that, that first Stronger Retreat was the moment I went, you know what, if someone asks, I'm going to be honest. And I think that was the first step for me. If they can't be who they are around the people they're, that they're not being themselves around, mm. are they hanging out with the right crowd? Yeah, absolutely. And that's definitely a realisation that, yeah, if that, that, that's a hard one to come to as well. But mm. So, so important. So important to take to challenge that. That actually wraps up the questions that I've got for you guys. Um, but before we go, um, has anyone got, I'd love, well, has anyone got anything they'd like to say to all those tuning in to Stronger Tonight. Guys, I hope you have a great time tonight. Um, look, I've been to a number of, I've helped, well, I've helped organise a number of strong rallies. I've been to a number of strong rallies. I've been to a couple of retreats as, re- retreats as well. Um, look, and they are a fantastic time to just basically get to know people, listen to what other people have to say, the wisdom they have to share. And it's, they're a great way to find God. Yeah, totally agree. Absolutely. It's, it's hard times. Uh, we are all experiencing it. Um, come together, have a listen tonight. Uh, take that time to, to listen to God. Um, take that bit of silence, that bit of music, that bit of a different perspective from someone. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Just listen, be present and give it a go. We're so privileged to, um, even though we can't all physically like get together and um, have an awesome night like we would, it's um, like we're so lucky to be able to still have this opportunity so um like the support which we would get through this for example would be um is amazing and then it shows that there is a community like even if you um are at home by yourself and you might not have your connections with like your youth groups or school you still by participating in this like you have a community and um you know i'm sure that once rallies get back they'll be better than ever so hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Got so many plans that I've had to put on hold. Um, but I just want to say a huge thank you to all three of you for agreeing to join me um, for this lovely chat. I hope you've enjoyed the time together. And I know that um, what you've had to offer people is going to really mean a lot at the moment. So really, thank you hugely from me and from everyone. If you'd like to see the full Q&A, we'll be uploading it next week. 
because it was edited down quite a bit and there was a whole heap of other really cool stuff in there. So make sure you're following us on social media, Instagram, Facebook and Twitter at Stronger Youth and uh, Santos Youth because we post updates on all the things that we have available, including when we upload all the content from tonight. And also, uh, follow to keep an eye out for similar opportunities because we, we love a good Q&A and maybe we'll do another one sooner rather than later. But that brings us almost to the end of Stronger Tonight. Um, we have lots more events coming up in the near future, um, some almost fully planned and some still in, um, in the early stages of planning, but information will be posted again on our social media as it becomes available, so stay tuned. But coming up soon we have uh, first a young adults um, scripture Q&A session with Father Brian Boyle on Zoom. Um, he's recently done a series of talks on scripture, short uh, th three parts, not too long, uh, and then we're going to have a bit of a Q&A. So more information to come. We're also going to have a Pentecost Vigil Youth Mass. I'm really excited about this one. Again, more information will be um, coming up fairly soon. It'll be on the Saturday night, the, the night Pentecost Eve, if you will. We also have over at the Santos Youth Ministry um, YouTube channel every weekday morning at 8.30 a.m. We've got weekday morning prayer. Um, I'm loving it. I'm hoping some of you guys are watching it. And if you're not, give it a go. It's fun. Um, we're also looking at forming some leadership teams to help out with media, design, music, engagement, dance, drama, maybe, we'll see. Um, figure we might as well start forming these teams for when isolation is lifted and we can go back to our regular rallies. We also are looking at some Zoom D groups, um, Santos Youth Ministry Book Club, youth forums, workshops, masterclasses, and so many more things. So stay tuned. I've got lots planned um, and it's just a case of how much, um, how much we can fit in while still working and studying and, and enjoying some quiet time as well. Um, we also have two job vacancies in the Santos Youth Ministry office. I just want to make sure you're all aware of them. Share it with people um, that they do not have to be an 18 year old, they don't have to be necessarily overly young, they don't have to be old. We're looking for people with experience to bring, um, not necessarily experience um, like a job history, uh, we're looking for people who have some gifts and talents that they can share with the diocese. So the two positions, one's an event management and communications role, helping me plan events um, and communicate about them, so websites social media and all those kinds of things um, and the other position is a music ministry and school outreach position which means that I'm really hoping that we'll be able to set up some form of music ministry within Santos Diocese again. Um, these roles are dependent on someone's gifts and talents so get in touch if you are even remotely interested and have a chat with me because we can talk about all the possibilities. That's enough. That's lots of information. Get in touch if you want to know more. A huge thanks to all our guests. So many of you, but especially uh, Bishop Shane, Jen Bryant, um, Jay Sarno, Father Rob, uh, Joe Melendres, uh, Jackson and his crew, the panel, Addy, Christopher, and everyone else who's helped out along the way. Um, to the St. Orgs crew, you are going to be ho helping host tonight. Um, We'll come and have a rally at your school at another time. You guys are great. Um, and lastly, to all of you who've tuned in tonight, um, thank you for giving this a go. Thank you for um, enjoying or hopefully enjoying this experiment. Um, and before we go, let's hand over to Jen Bryant to play us out. Thanks for coming, guys. i
enough for me My heart knows this place This love, this grace And I will not be afraid, afraid For I am safe in your embrace it's been uh, an amazing opportunity to come together and to celebrate together to pray together um, and to be together even though we are far apart um, I hope you've enjoyed tonight just as much as I've enjoyed it um, and our last song tonight I wanted to um, have something that might lift your voices no matter where you are, no matter who's around you. Uh, maybe you can get them involved. I think this is a, this is a great song um, for sending forth, for going forth, for, for calling on God to uh, make us stronger and, and send us out. So this is a little song of mine called Send Us Out. <laughs> and I want to teach it to you if you haven't heard it before. So it goes like this. We will sing, we will shout, we will go, so send us out. I want you to sing it wherever you are. All right, here we go. Don't be shy. We will sing, and we will shout, we will go, so send us out. Now, if you know it already, you know that we've got to have some claps in the middle there, all right? So I'll give you a hand. It goes like this. We will sing. We will shout. We will go so sad and us out. One more time. We will sing. And we will shout. We will go so sad and us. Sad and us out. Sad and us. Sad and us out. Send us, send us, cause you are my strength, you are my song, you're my 
Send 